Well, good morning, folks, guys. Uh, this transformer with my transition from the Grow Watch to Solarx, I no longer need this transformer. The Solarx put out split phase 120, 240, whereas the Grow Watch only put out 240 volts. So I had used this transformer to safely derive uh, a neutral for the system. But since the Solarks are split phase, I no longer need this. Now, it's not a, it's not a lost cost for me because I have another job that I'm gonna put this on. So I've already recovered the cost for that transformer. But I've got to disconnect the wiring for it I thought I'd do that this morning. I'm probably gonna leave it sitting in here for a few days though. Uh, I don't need it on that job site at the moment. And to keep from having to manhandle it several times, I'll probably leave it in here until I actually install it on the other job site, which will be sometime in January. But I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the wiring because I have to rewire to my manual transfer switch on the outside uh, right now this is the wire going to the manual transfer transfer switch and it comes out of here uh, so i've got to rewire this because now instead of the way this was fed fed was the grow watts came into this panel into these breakers so this was my feed in and then this breaker was my feed out with 240 volts to the transformer and then on the secondary side of the transformer I came up and to the line side of this breaker here and then this fed back out to to the transfer switch well that's going to change so i've got to rewire the panels i thought about taking this panel out i may leave this panel and just take this one out here i think the wiring is going to work out this wire runs in here it'll be long enough to come back out and then over into here to go to the transfer switch i will have to run a neutral and i think this neutral wire here will be long enough that I can pull it back in here and connect it to this neutral bar. Now the Solarks will feed into this panel. I'll have 225 amp breakers, one from the output for each Solark. And I'll also have to run a, change this lug out to a big lug and change this lug out to a big lug and run the neutral from here to here. And then this ground bar will become a, my neutral bar, whereas it's not at the moment. I'll remove this grounding screw and I'll have to put a ground bar in here, to catch the grounds. And I discussed some of the reasons for why this was like this in a previous video. I had modified this breaker to handle a shunt trip breaker. It's a square D breaker in a GE panel, but I had planned on using this with a remote control for in case an emergency came up, I could shut the power off. And I may still, still do that. I mean, this breaker here, is a much heavier duty breaker than this breaker so i'm probably just gonna leave it in there i could take it back out and put a ge in there but i'm probably gonna leave it like it is so anyway that's gonna be my big wire my big wires that have to be rewired uh, anyway i'll fix it to get started okay i'm inside the transformer I'm fixing to disconnect uh, the way this transformer worked from my 
inverter output panel where I had my five grow watts feeding into and then back, back out of the main breaker into the line side of this transformer here. Now I've already checked the voltages, so everything's dead. Uh, I had 240 that came in here and then coming out, I had 120, 240. And this is where I picked my neutral up right here. So that's how I was generating my neutral from my grow watts. And this worked well. The only, the only thing about a transformer is every time you put a transformer in, you introduce line losses. And while this is a high efficiency transformer, it still uh, it still introduces some line losses. So I had some line losses when I was running through my inverters, regardless of whether it was the PV uh, powering the inverters or the battery powering the inverters, or it was in bypass, because when it was in bypass, all the utility power ran through the inverters and came here. So <clears throat> all the power in my house came through this transformer. Uh, the Sin, uh, Solarks, I don't know why I got Sinclair on my mind. Somebody's been asking me quite a few questions about my ground mount. But the Solarks are a split phase unit. So you have 12240, so I don't have to generate the neutral. Now I could do it. I could just run the 240 from the Solarks. Uh, just disconnect the neutrals in the Solarks, which is one of the approved ways of installing the Solarks. And then run it through here and pick up the neutral just like this. And then my Solarks would only be pulling 240 volts. And that would be a way of doing it, except again, I'm introducing some line losses through the transformer. Now, if I don't have to do that, I'd rather not do that. Because if it amounts to, I don't know, four kilowatt hour, five kilowatt hours a day, that's that much more power uh, I'm having to generate uh, that I can't use in my home. But one of the things a transformer does is that any, at least in this case where I'm generating a neutral on the secondary side, that any imbalances in the system like between l1 and l2 the neutral is all taken care of inside the transformer so on the line side when you get to the line side everything's balanced out <clears throat> if you only got two wires that makes the circuit so the current in line one which would be my black wire right here and the current in l2 is exactly the same so if you were having problems with your inverters uh, being imbalanced, this here would take care of that problem. All the imbalance would be in this winding down here. So you'd have an imbalanced transformer on the secondary side, but on the primary side, it would be balanced because there's only two wires and you gotta have two wires to complete the circuit. And then the current, and if you go through your Kirchhoff law, the current in one line will have to be exactly the same as in the other line. Um, with the grow watts, you know, it wasn't, it was necessary because they only put out 240 volts and I needed 12240. Now with the Sinclair's, uh, that's different. I'm sorry, not Sinclair's. Solarks, it's different. They put out 12240. So I'm gonna wire this out of the circuit and it shouldn't be a problem. I've got two of them in parallel. So that gives me two 12 kW inverters in parallel for a total of 24 kW or 12 kW per line. So that's what you got to keep in mind when you start loading your inverters, these uh, split phase inverters, particularly the transformerless inverters, the high frequency inverters, is that you in essence, you could think of it being two inverters in one. Uh, for the Solar 15K, it's a 12K inverter when you're using the batteries. So you've got 6KW per line. So 
So if you unbalance it and you say you want to put 7kW on line 1 and 5kW on line 2, that's that's 12kW, but you're exceeding the 6kW for line 1. So it's probably going to trip out. Uh, so you just got to keep that in mind when, when you're loading this stuff up. Keep all your heavy loads on 240 if possible, and that balances out L1 and L2. And then your single phase loads, you know, you want to try to balance those out too. But that's one of the reasons I'm using two Solark 15Ks is to ensure I don't have that problem because with two of them in parallel, I now have 12 kW per line. 12 on line one, 12 on line two, a total of 24 kW. Now, this uh, code snap that we've had here uh, down south, you know, it got pretty cold down around 18. Uh, and there were times that I've pulled 24 kW. Um, we've got a heat pump system and it does not cool, I mean, it does not heat when it's below 40 degrees. So it's going to the electric strips. And when, whereas that's not real often down south, it does happen on occasion. And when it does, it, um, you know, it kicks in some electric heat strips to try to make up for it. I may be changing that system out at some point to, um, an inverter type system that will cool, I mean, will heat when the temperatures get down around zero without having to go to heat strips. But that's a future project. Anyway, I'm fixing to disconnect this. I'll reuse much of this wiring because I'm gonna reconfigure. And instead of this panel going out to the bypass switch, I'm going to use this panel to go out to the bypass switch. So that means I've got to pull these wires out. I've got to pull these wires out going to the bypass switch. I've got to also run a neutral from this panel here because from the grow watts, I did not have a neutral. So there's not even a neutral in that panel. Uh, but this neutral up here should be long enough. I'll pull it out, pull these out, rewrite them back through this pipe here and hook it up to my transfer switch. And I'll have to uh, also install a ground bar inside this panel because I was using that neutral bar as a ground bar since I didn't have a neutral in there. But uh, that'll, that'll all take place here in a little bit. Or actually it may be tomorrow. I'll have to kill the power to my house and, and swap over to the generator when I do that because the, the manual transfer switch, the clearances are too close to uh, do it hot. In my younger and dumber days, I would have done that, but uh, in my older and dumber days, I'm a little more cautious, I guess. At any rate, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to be doing here shortly. I'm going to be taking these loose. And I'll, I'll probably, like I said, tie into that transfer switch tomorrow. All right, that's an update.